Francois and his son were sitting in their car, stuck in a traffic jam, arguing with each other. Suddenly, someone from the van in front of them broke the door of their car and attacked it with a loud bang. Frightened, those who were outside hurried back into the car. It was unclear whether the attacker was a human or an animal. His feet looked like an animal's, and one of his hands was a wing. The police apprehended this strange creature, revealing that a disease in the city had begun turning humans into animal-like beings. The government was working to find a cure for the illness. Francois's wife had also fallen victim to this disease and had been admitted to the hospital. Francois wanted to care for her himself, but her condition worsened and the doctors insisted she stay in the hospital. When Francois went to visit her, her face had taken on an animal-like appearance. When Francois urged his son to visit his mother, the boy resisted, saying she no longer understood him. Francois tried to reassure him, telling him she would be happy to see him. At the hotel where Francois worked, people spoke of a new hospital being built nearby, designed to be strong enough to house the animal like humans. Later at night, as patients were being transferred to the new facility, chaos ensued, causing a bus to plunge into the water. Many animal like humans were killed and others went missing. That night, Francois's son, too, was frightened by the sight of a person outside their window, but upon a second glance, no one was there, making him think it was just his imagination. When Francois learned of the accident, he rushed to the site to check on his wife, but the police informed him that she was neither among the dead nor the living. She was missing. The next day, Francois's son was at school, playing tug-of-war with a group of children, and though his team was losing, he somehow displayed incredible strength surprising everyone, including himself. On his way home, a friend invited him to a party on Friday, but he hesitated. When he returned home, he noticed that his spine was protruding strangely, and fear took over as he worried he was also turning into an animal. He rushed to take a bath, but no amount of washing would change what was happening to him. Meanwhile, Francois encountered the same police officer who had earlier informed him about his wife's disappearance. The officer still had no new information and reassured him that they were doing their best to take care of the sick people who remained. While talking at the super mall, someone suddenly shouted that they had seen a strange person. Francois, hopeful that it might be his wife, rushed to the scene, but found a man who resembled an octopus. The police officer with Francois swiftly caught the octopus-like man, while Francois noticed a little girl who had transformed into a bird. Afterward, the police officer casually asked Francois what he had bought so many supplies for, and Francois vaguely replied that he was going camping, though in reality, he intended to use the supplies to search for his wife, believing she was lost in the jungle after the accident. That night, Francois confided in his son that many animal-like people had gone missing after the accident, including his mother. Francois suggested they go to the jungle on Friday to search for her, but his son, now excited about the party invitation, declined. Francois reluctantly allowed him to go to the party, but reminded him to return by 8 p.m. At the party, Francois's son suddenly felt dizzy, and a girl offered him a tablet to help. Instead of swallowing it, he licked it, mimicking a dog's behavior, and afterward, he wandered into the jungle. The next morning, Francois's son awoke in the jungle with the sensation of something stuck in his throat. When he returned home, his lips had changed dramatically, and his complexion had shifted as well. In the bathroom, he pulled out what was lodged in his throat, a feather. Terrified, he realized he was indeed turning into an animal. He and his father then set off for the jungle with their dog to find his mother. They searched for hours, calling out to her, but when they found no trace, they decided to rest. In the middle of the night, their dog began barking, leading them to a tree where a monkey-like figure was perched. Suddenly, an eagle-shaped person attacked Francois's son, but upon seeing his lips, the creature recognized that Francois's son was also transforming and spared him. Although spared, Francois's son was still injured, so Francois insisted on taking him to the hospital. However, the boy resisted, not wanting anyone to discover that he was becoming an animal. On the way, they encountered the police officer again, who insisted they visit the hospital, where army doctors treated his injuries. The officer informed Francois that the government had called in the military to handle the situation. When they returned home, Francois's son strangely removed his bandages and began licking his wounds, animal-like. Even at school, he had an unusual experience with the lab rats, 
silencing them with a loud command as though they could understand him. Disturbed, he ran to the river where he caught and ate a raw fish, witnessed by a woman who quickly fled. Later, he met the eagle-shaped man in the jungle again, who was practicing flying but kept falling and injuring himself. Francois's son tried to help by showing him a safe place to practice, a pond surrounded by trees, where he could fall without getting hurt. Meanwhile, back at Francois's restaurant, an animal-like man attacked, causing chaos. Another creature, possibly Francois's wife, ran away during the commotion, leaving Francois torn between chasing after her and handling the immediate threat. The police eventually captured the animal-like attacker, and Francois joined them in searching the jungle, but found only his son's bicycle. When they returned home, Francois discovered broken nails in the sink, confirming his son's transformation. At school, one of the boy's teeth fell out, further evidence of his metamorphosis. Everyone mocked him, so he fled to the eagle-shaped man in the jungle, where he found comfort. Upon returning home, Francois confronted his son, demanding to see his hands, but the boy resisted. It was clear now, his son was becoming an animal. Francois' son began to embrace his animalistic changes, though he was conflicted about it. He confided in his father about the heightened senses he was developing and the changes in his body, asking whether he would end up like his mother, chained. Francois could only offer a somber, uncertain response. The next day, at a party at Francois's restaurant, his son's nails had grown excessively, and Francois scolded him. Hurt by his father's words, the boy lashed out, injuring Francois. Francois was trying to save his son from the eyes of the people. He also kept scissors around his son's neck, threatening to cut his nails. After cutting them, Francois's son went to meet his friend, and they became very close. The girl touched his backbone and said, I know all the changes happening inside you, but I don't care. Meanwhile, one of their classmates found out the truth about Francois's son. He confronted him with a strange device that didn't affect humans but annoyed animals. The boy used it to bother Francois's son, revealing, I've known your secret for a long time. Unable to take it, Francois's son slapped the boy, leaving marks on his cheek. The situation worsened, and the police and army began searching for him in the jungle. An eagle-like man, whom Francois's son had once helped, flew him to safety deep in the forest. But the police and army followed, and when Francois's son crossed a river, the army opened fire, killing the eagle-like man, who had become his friend. Francois's son, now accepting the jungle as his home, ate fruit and bathed in the river. When he emerged, strange marks appeared on his back, signaling rapid changes in his body. As he wandered deeper into the jungle, he found others like him, humans who had turned into animals, including his mother, who recognized him by scent. She couldn't speak but kept guiding him to a cave, as if telling him it was safe. Emile noticed some had turned into snakes, monkeys, a pig, and even a chameleon. Everyone lived peacefully until the military fired smoke into the area, causing chaos. The army used a special device that emitted sounds tormenting the animals and Francois' son. He was eventually captured, but the chameleon girl hid and escaped. The police brought Francois' son back to the city, where Francois met them, claiming his son had wandered into the jungle by accident. Since Francois's son still looked human, the police had no suspicions, but when they handed him a paper to sign, he roared in anger, unable to do so. This made the police suspect his transformation. They moved to arrest him, but Francois intervened, assaulted the police, signed the paper, and took his son away. Meanwhile, the officer who had been helping Francois from the start realized something was wrong, prompting the military to pursue them. Francois's son, scared, asked if his father would visit him if he were caught and locked up in a health center. Francois reassured him, they'll never catch you, I'm with you, his son then revealed he had seen his mother in the jungle, and Francois felt relieved. He drove into the jungle, telling his son to run and be free, where he would be happy. Without hesitation, Francois's son ran, leaving Francois behind with tears of joy in his eyes, knowing he had saved his son from government torture. With this, the film story ends.